the which is about Harry and his wife, Meghan. They have reportedly changed their children's surname to Sussex to match their own titles. Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet had been known as Mountbatten Windsor, which was a nod to the Queen and Prince Philip's surnames. But since the coronation, they've been using Sussex as their family name. The news comes as the couple have been spotted on the slopes in Canada as they promote next year's Invictus Games. Joining us now is the Royal Commentator, Emily Andrews, and of course, we've got Daisy's brilliant Royal expertise with us as well here in the studio. Uh, thank you so much, Emily, for joining us. Um, first of all, let's talk about this change of name because that is potentially quite significant, isn't it? Well, uh, for those of us who are royal geeks, I mean, I would say not really. I mean, I, yes, on the one hand, no, on the other hand. And to take, no, it's not really significant. I mean, if you think about Harry and William, when they were young, they were the sons of the Prince and Princess of Wales, and their surname was Wales. George, Charlotte and Louis, when their parents were the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, they were known as George, Charlotte and Louis Cambridge at school. No prince or princesses for them at school. Um, and then when their parents became the prince and, prince and princess of Wales, they then became Charlotte, Louis and George Wales as well. So essentially, Lilibet and Archie becoming Sussex and not Mountbatten Windsor follows a long line of kind of aristocratic families that take the, the, the ducal title and then use it as the surname. What is significant in this case is that I, I remember, in fact, I was just going back through my WhatsApp messages to look at when I was WhatsApping the uh, press secretary when Archie was born. And she very, very clearly, this, of course, was when um, Harry and Meghan were still members of the royal family. And Archie was also um, going to be potentially a working royal come, you know, 1822. Um, and he was going to be, she was very clear that he was going to be Archie Mountbatten Windsor. She remember her distinctly saying to me that the couple, Meghan and Harry, did not want their son to have any kind of, you know, royal title, didn't want to burden him, saddle him in the same way that Princess Anne chose with her children, Zara and Peter, not to give them royal titles. Now, suddenly, we are being told that when King Charles, um, about a year ago, said it was fine for Meghan and Harry to use the Prince and Princess title for Archie and Lilibet, this is because they are they can they are grandchildren of a monarch, and so they are allowed to be Prince and Princess. They have now changed from Mountbatten Windsor to Sussex. It is interesting, though, as you were saying, Emily, because whilst their um, spokeswoman said at the time they don't want to be prince and princess, we've known for ages that they did want them to be prince and princess because Meghan made such a big deal of it in her Oprah Winfrey uh, interview when she said that it was... or she implied that it was really unfair uh, that her mm. unborn child and Archie, who, of course, was a toddler then, um, wouldn't get to be prince and princess. And I think she was saying that it was because I think Charlotte was already a princess at the time, which was a little bit unusual given the fact that Charles wasn't king already at that time. Yeah, well, if we go into the sort of the weeds of letters <laughs> pattern, I mean, effectively, Charlotte was a princess because her father was direct heir to the throne. And Harry, as we know from Spare, um, was never going to be a direct heir to the British throne. But what I do think is really interesting is this, as you say, a complete disconnect from what, you know, we were being told in 2019 when Archie was born, like, oh, no, guys, it's fine. So Harry changed? and Meghan don't want royal titles. Emily, Emily what's changed? For their children. What's Pardon? changed? What's changed? Well, there's either, there's one of two things, isn't it? Either that was a complete lie and they wanted royal titles all the time and they were just pretending for PR purposes, or that they can cash in on their royal titles. I mean, they are now saying that the whole, you know, idea of this Sussex web, new Sussex.com website is because it brings all four of them, the family, into the brand. And that's why they're also using the Sussex surname. And some people will say, well, it's because you just want to cash in. You just want to monetize. On the website, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet are called exactly that. And of course, you know, that's real cachet in the States, isn't it? It's cachet in the UK, but massive cachet in the States to be American royals. Yeah. Um, Emily, we're looking at uh, the most recent pictures of Harry and Meghan on the slopes uh, in Canada. Of course, they're there um, to talk about the Invictus Games, which I think this time round is going to have winter sports, so you know, skiing and so on, as part of uh, it for the first time. Of course, any pictures like this that have um, uh, so many shots of Meghan are going to be beamed around the world just because we don't see her an awful lot out and about in this kind of environment. 
Well, Daisy, according to their new website, she is one of the most famous women in the world. <laughs> so, you know, we are we are graced by her presence to have these uh, these pictures with their own film crew following them around. Yeah, look, you know, we're still fascinated, aren't we? We're still talking about them over here. We're still talking about them over in America. But I mean, certainly, I don't think they really care what we, well, I was going to say, I don't think they care what they don't care what we say about them here in the UK, but obviously Harry's actions against three British tabloid newspapers, obviously he still does care. But I certainly think that they're for their brand in the US, it's really, really important for them to be seen doing this. This is a quasi royal tour, you know, three days in a realm, you know, don't forget the King Charles is, is head of state in Canada. And they're kind of doing all the stuff that they would have done had they still been working members of the royal family. It's a charity, they're working with veterans, they're promoting good causes. And I think for their brand, for their money making brand in the US, it's really important for them to be shown like this, because frankly, their reputation has been failing both here and in the US because people got fed up with them whinging all the time about how what victims they were and how awful the British royal family were. Do we know what their film crew is filming them for? Have they got a commission or is, is this just so that they can stick footage up on social media? Well, they don't have any presence on social media at the moment, which is interesting. There's no, they um, they shut down their Instagram when they left the British royal family, although their Sussex royal Insta page is still, they didn't shutter it, they just stopped using it. I don't know what this film crew is for, but I suspect it's probably to do with their Netflix deal when they, um, one of the three things they did for Netflix was Heart of Invictus, didn't get huge ratings, on Netflix, but they did use a lot of footage of Harry and Meghan at the last couple of Invictus games. So I suspect this is part of their, you know, their deals and their programme making so going forward. So there's a sort of Beckham-esque documentary coming down the line, is there? Well, I mean, haven't we had enough? I mean, what more could they possibly say? I mean, I just, they have made it, they've let it be known that they don't want to look back anymore, they want to look forward. But the reality, the sad reality, I think, for Harry and Meghan is that unless that they are talking about being royal, unless they're talking about prince and princess, you know, Archie and Lil Lilibet, unless they're talking about their five minutes for Meghan's case within the royal family, do we actually care what they do? Do we actually want to listen to what they have to say? A lot of people would say no. I think a lot of people would, but actually just um, personally speaking, watching those pictures and, and also listening to uh, what you were saying, Emily, about this this being like a quasi-royal tour. And of course, it does look like that, as you said. You know, there they are, out and about in front of the cameras, doing you know good works and, and talking about charities. It does make me sad watching them because they were so really? popular. Yes, like it what does. it could have been. Yes, it ah. does because they were so popular. And I'm afraid this is going to sound incredibly. It is incredibly shallow. It's not going to sound shallow. It is shallow. But she is so beautiful. She looks and, great. And yeah. you look at those pictures, like you know, and they look in love, and they look young and relevant, and 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 so on. And I do think, what a shame. What a shame that they're not there representing us. Am I, Emily, am I a lone voice? That was <laughs> a Pollyanna lone voice. No, no, absolutely. And, you know, I, I've been, I've been uh, lucky enough to meet her in real life and she is absolutely drop dead gorgeous and tiny Daisy. Um, but um, I'm fascinated with our roast dinners, was asking me about roast chicken. Anyway, um, no, in another world, you know, let's just imagine for a second that they hadn't left the royal family. And let's just imagine you've got the king who's out of public life because he's undergoing cancer diagnosis, cancer treatment, sorry, after that shock cancer diagnosis. You've got the Princess of Wales who is out of public life until after Easter. In another world, Harry and Meghan would be front and centre mm -hmm. of royal duties. They would be visiting Canada. Well, they would potentially be visiting Canada, although normally it is the new king that has to visit any realm first. But they'd be visiting Can Canada, they'd be talking about Charles, they'd be receiving well wishes on his behalf, and they'd be front and centre of the very streamlined royal family. And I agree with you. I mean, I live in South London. When Meghan and Harry came to Brixton, when they were still working, the whole place erupted. People said to me, she represents me. I've never seen a member of the British royal family who represents me. Out in Australia, I was at a, a school um, with a lot of Aboriginal school girls and they were sort of you know open mouthed meeting Megan going this is someone who represents me who can look like me because she can do that I can do anything their reach was huge and and I understand why they left it's multifaceted we've, we've discussed it several times but I, I think it I do think it is really sad and yeah I I agree with you I I, I think that this new website is cashing in I'm afraid but it's 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 sad to think that maybe if things have been a bit better on either side, 
then they could have stayed and what an asset they would have been. And Emily, talking about cashing in, um, we believe you know, it's a fair assumption to think that the, the Sussex.com rather than the other two Archwell um, websites, they might be a bit of TIG Mark II, her own uh, influencer website that, that she set up, um, that maybe she's going to do a bit more of that on that website. Do you think we'll be seeing you know, branded items for sale? <laughs> No, no, this is a lot more of a classy, classier affair, I'd say, than the TIG. No disrespect to the TIG, because it was very enjoyable, you know, for, for women like you and I, Daisy, who wanted to read about, like, good food and travel and things like that. No, this is much more aspirational. This, to me, screams Megan for president. I mean, it's very presidential. It has her coat of arms. It has the colour, um, even the colourway, that royal blue of the royal family or, you know, the American president. For me, this is, you know, a very serious website promoting a very serious woman who is not going to write about hair curling and the latest sashimi. I wonder how long before um, that changes because obviously this rebrand is made with the best of intentions. She's announced this Lemonada deal. Obviously the Invictus Games is great for Harry's brand as well but she lists herself first and foremost on that website as a feminist. He says he's a humanitarian uh, neither of which really pay the bills do they? <laughs> Well, no. And, you know, obviously that Californian mortgage is not going to pay itself, plus their ever growing security bill. And so I think that it is tricky for them. You know, we've been here a couple of times now. What exactly do Harry and Meghan, how, what are they going to do? It seems to me that whilst they go to Invictus and they support you know, Invictus, it's a great cause, it's fantastic, it's one of the best things that Harry did. However, let's not forget that Invictus was born and curated, um, un you know, under the Royal Foundation of William, Harry and Kate. It was conceived by royal courtiers and that's how it be became so successful and give gave it the platform that it has now. And it, it is a charity, you know, Harry, Harry might be being flown there and back by private jet that he's not paying for, but Invictus is a charity. How are Harry and Meghan going to make millions and millions of dollars? Well, they've got to do it by, by big bucks deals like Netflix and Spotify. Spotify obviously dumped them, citing them as, you know, one of their chief execs called them grifters. That Netflix deal, I hear, is still very much active. There's been suggestions that they might be, you know, dumped by Netflix. And, of course, obviously they've been courted or courting Paramount Pictures, who are Netflix's biggest rival. They went to Jamaica with the... Um, Paramount CEO and um, to attend a Bob Marley film premiere there. So I think probably media and entertainment is still where they're going to make their money, but they are not producers. And so fine if they want to be in front of the camera and still talk about their royal life, or their ex-royal life, but if they don't want to do that and they are not seasoned producers and Hollywood is really, really cutthroat, I wonder how are they going to make that transition to behind the camera? if they can. Well, exactly. Maybe they'll have to downsize and move somewhere a bit smaller and maybe they'll have to cut back on their $6 million annual security bill. Go from grifters that, to being grafters, That maybe. we know they are paying at the moment. Emily Andrews, thank you uh, very much. I'm sure we'll have more royal news to talk about in the next few days.